What's up nerds? This is Bibs and today I want to talk to you about bass and sub-bass frequencies. I have a very cool technique to share that will allow you to gain full control over that 40 to 80 Hz range. Let's go! Before we get started, we need to brush up some basics, otherwise this technique will go way over your head. What I'm about to show you is a little bit technical, so bear with me to take full advantage of this method. First, let's talk about the sweet spot. When it comes to low frequencies, not all notes are created equal. In my book, the sweet spot is between E and A, and I try to stay within that range. Anything lower than that and the frequencies might not translate as well on the sound speakers, and higher is gonna lack some weight. And for bass sound, that's problematic. So before you even think about mixing and sound design, have that range in mind and compose accordingly. Doing so will save you a lot of headache further down the road when mixing time comes around. Speaking of mixing, one of the reasons why mixing is hard is that the frequency content is always changing. Every time there's a note change or a chord movement, these frequencies are shifting either up or down. So your EQ adjustments may work in the first measure, but they can also become irrelevant in the second one. So unless you are making techno or any other kind of music that relies on one single note, you're gonna struggle trying to chase this harmonic balance throughout your arrangement. So now with these two principles in mind, sweet spot and frequency shift, let's see if we can shape the perfect sub bass. All right, first you need to get yourself a synth that can generate sine waves. In this case, we are using Spire, so set it to sine, Make sure it's uh, polyphonic so we can play multiple notes at once and turn the velocity knob all the way up so the higher the velocity, the louder the note will be. On to the MIDI part. Let's start by drawing an A. So far, nothing special. It's actually common practice to use a single sine wave to take care of these low frequencies uh, in a track. But we're gonna take it a step further by using the principles of additive synthesis by adding our own harmonics. Since we're generating sine waves, each note will represent a frequency or a harmonic. If you need some visual help, you can look at the analyzer in the bottom left. And when I say harmonics, we're not gonna go too crazy. All we're gonna do is add an octave up and maybe a perfect fifth. And go easy on the perfect fifth because it can get messy real fast, especially down below. Once we set the harmonic balance to something we are happy with, let's try to copy this whole batch of MIDI notes and transpose it down to an F. Unfortunately, that sounds quite different, even though we kept the same velocities. That's because we don't perceive all frequencies the same way. So we're gonna have to make a different balance for each note if we want to keep the whole progression consistent. I hope you enjoyed this quick tip. It's a great way to have consistency in the lower range and add harmonics to your bass so it can be heard on laptop speakers. And the most beautiful thing, you don't even need EQ or compression since you are controlling everything from the source. Thanks for watching, until next time.